Welcome to the C2C Podcast. I am your host, Derek Anderson. After holding my first event in 2010, I went on to create Startup Grind, a 400-chapter community based in over 100 countries. Along the way, I discovered the greatest marketing tool of all time, your customers. Yet, I couldn't find anyone sharing how to build a community where people could experience your brand in person or at scale. On this show, we talk with the brightest minds and companies on the planet about how to build customer-to-customer marketing strategies and create in-person experiences for your brand and customers before your competitor does. Our next guest is Andrew Middleton, who is currently the dot organizer at Automatic, the company behind WordPress. She's worked at Automatic for over eight years. That's like 30 for a startup. Among the many things she has done, she has spearheaded the in-person community for WordPress, which has grown to over 700 cities and 2,000 volunteers. Andrea is one of the smartest community people I have ever met and one of my favorite people to talk to. Take a listen. Andrea, it's great to have you. Could you describe what Automatic is and what your role is in the company? Sure. So um, Automatic is the company behind brands like WordPress.com, Jetpack, WooCommerce, as well as um, some non-WordPress-based brands like Long Reads and Happy Schedule. It was founded in 2005. Um, And my role isn't actually on the for-profit side of Automatic. I I and my team are donated by Automatic to the WordPress Open Source Project. Um, So we focus exclusively on the free software that runs about one-third of the internet today um, and helping build, uh, maintain, and support the volunteers, build and maintain that software and then support the volunteers who do that work. And how big is your team today? Uh, We are 14 today, counting me, um, but Automatic donates another 20-ish people to the open source project. My team only focuses on uh, community events at this point. How did the in-person community for WordPress get started? We, you know, I was thinking about this. I think the first intentionally organized WordPress-focused event was the first WordCamp, which uh, was organized by Matt Mullenweg, who's the co-founder of WordPress and also the CEO of Automatic. Um, And that was organized in 2006. Uh, Matt and a few other friends had uh, just organized the first bar camp. And uh, then Matt had the idea, why don't we have a bar camp about WordPress? Um, Publicized it. People flew in from all over. I think at the time, WordPress had only been around for about three years. Um, And so they had about 100, 150 people from all over the world. And it was a really exciting event. Um, And it really caught on. Um, Like three years later, there were about 62 different WordCamps organized all over the world. And WordCamp is is a event that you you host or like a day long? Is it a day? Is it hour through a couple of hours? Like... Tell us what what is what does it mean to be a word sure, camp? Sure, a word event. camp. Um, the way we define it, um, well, the way everyone <laughs> defines it is a um, what an at least one whole day long uh, community organized WordPress focused conference. Um, our minimum viable product for WordCamp, as we explained to our organizers, is fifty people in a room all day talking WordPress. There's no um, restrictions really about like format um, or anything like that. It's just a way to get a whole bunch of WordPress enthusiasts together to geek out about WordPress. And are these mostly developers? Are they administrators? Are they people running businesses that create, you know, WordPress content or that make their business off WordPress? Like who, who is this group of people? That, um, yes, all of those. <laughs> we, um, we are a really locally focused and diverse group of people. Um, so the question of like who all comes to a WordCamp um, or a WordPress, a local WordPress monthly meetup, which is really the foundation of our community, um, really depends on the where where it's being held. Um, we have some communities that 
have a lot more content creators and marketers. Uh, we have some communities that are really rich in developers or designers. We have a lot of communities that are uh, full of entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, site builders. It's just, there's, there's room for all of those people in our community. Do you have a hard time like creating content or keeping it interesting for so many different types of people with so many different types of problems? Or does just the banner of WordPress, is that enough to bring everybody together and make it interesting who's ever attending? It's not top down like that. Like we, we don't, um, there isn't a central organization programming all of these events. The, the events themselves come together through the local community organizers um, and those community organizers who are trained and supported through, through the kind of uh, global community team, which is kind of our central organization for our community events. Um, they train and support our local organizers in learning how to identify what topics are going to be interesting and exciting um, for the local community. But you can't organize a WordCamp in your town unless you're already part of the community that it reflects. And WordCamps are really more of an expression of the local community than they are um, something that's delivered to the local community, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. What what most companies only have an online community. So how do you turn that into a thriving in person customer to customer community that gets together offline? Well, so we're a little different. At least um, the the part of WordPress that I work on is the open source project itself. So um, not an actual company with customers per se, but really a, a huge multinational collective of people who are passionate about open source and democratizing publishing. Um, and in the open source project, people have come together through the internet um, since 2003, uh, 2003 to like build and maintain and extend WordPress, this free software that powers over a third of the internet. The goal of our in-person community events is always, um, is, is generally centers around one, uh, three main purposes, um, to connect WordPress enthusiasts, to inspire people to do more with WordPress, and then to contribute back to the open source project that's made so many businesses and uh, um, so many lives better. Um, and so really for our in-person community, what drives people, what keeps people coming back, I think, are those are frequently those three things. That desire to connect with people who also are passionate about WordPress. That thirst for inspiration of how to like do more and extend what you thought was possible. And then that gratitude for this um, free kind of platform that um, has been the foundation for so many life-changing experiences for people. So you have more than 700 groups, which is sort of boggles the mind. Mine too. Um, <laughs> what has been the biggest driver of growth? That's such a good question. Um, I think as WordPress grows, the WordPress community grows with it. Um, and WordPress has been fortunate enough to continue some pretty spectacular growth as a CMS um, over the past 15, 16 years. Um, and I think also part of our, the community's growth is our kind of balance between freedom and support. Um, we have a pretty open, actually, I think a remarkably open and welcoming kind of gentle path to leadership within the community um, program. And we provide a lot of training and support for people who want to learn how to create community and create more um, healthy and, and connected communities. I think what's um, amazing to me about how the scale that it's at and what you've been able to do with it and how, it, how it's happening, like, I think of a lot of these other brands that are trying to get from you know, 10 cities to 20 to 50 to 100 and there are certain products and 
communities and in some cases companies that are sort of really, their customer base is really suited to these kinds of interactions. Um, and then there are others that it's maybe more difficult, but it feels like the, the WordPress community is just in one of these total sweet spots of like, this is just something that the community is really good for these types of people. At the same time, uh, WordPress and you and your team have been working at it and pushing it. It's not like you just like, oh, here you go, like good luck with that. You all have been really driving it and, and engaging with them and improving and making it better and tweaking it and doing all these things year after year. And so you really have really put a lot of fuel on that fire. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of teams struggle to get funding and um, of their programs. And, and yet you have sort of built this um, community empire uh, in, in some ways of, of just incredible amounts of value and doing so much good. I just wonder, like, how, how have you done that? Like, how have you proved the value? How have you funded it? Um, and I think somebody joined your team today. Your team keeps growing. Um, so what's been the, the secret or what have been the, the sort of stepping stones for you to be able to grow and get more resources and get, uh, you know, more attention and excitement internally around the program that you're building? That is a huge question, Derek. Okay, let me, I'm going to break it down into a few parts. <laughs> So I should be really clear. Um, I have, uh, when I talk about my team, I actually have a couple of definitions there. Um, I have a team at Automatic that is um, that is 14 people fully uh, focused on supporting WordPress community organizers and contributors. Um, and then in the open source project, I have a huge team of maybe... 2,000 volunteers and organizers um, that are all working independently um, to create welcoming, inclusive, inspiring, and connecting events all over the world. So um, while, you know, so part of, I think, what helps stabilize that massive uh, group of people and massive movement is... Um, Partially, I mean, automatic giving so many full-time people to the open source project is um, really stabilizing. You know, an open source project can be um, really unstable and needs a lot of maintenance support. Um, and so that um, the, the support that automatic has given um, to community programs, I think, sets as has, has helped set WordPress apart from other open source projects, community programs. Um, we kind of have a little bit more of a centralized structure um, that provides a way more support than almost any other open source community events program that I've ever heard of, at least. Although I'm always interested in learning about ones that I've never heard of. So please <laughs> come and tell me how you're doing it right, because I would love to steal your ideas. Um, but, um, and then as far as like how how that continues to scale and grow, um, a lot of it has to do with, I think, the enormous amount of trust that we have in the WordPress community. Um, we give people some outlines and then we trust really deeply, really fast. <laughs> um, and um, by and large, we don't get taken. Like, it's pretty amazing what happens when you kind of give people um, a lighthouse and then a lot of freedom on how to get there. Um, funding wise, we've been very fortunate to, um, start out very early with a number of businesses that have wanted to encourage the growth of WordPress community events, um, in a pretty, uh, um, generous way. So, uh, we started a thing called the WordPress, uh, community sponsor, the global community sponsorship program. Um, back in 2013, me and a group of um, wide-eyed, optimistic, enthusiastic volunteers from a number of different kind of parts of the WordPress community came up with this way because we had we had some large companies that wanted to sponsor all of the events in the world, but didn't have 
enough people to like connect with 50 or 75 or 120 different volunteer teams, <laughs> um, which um, can be time consuming, right? So because we had set up some financial and kind of um, some infrastructure within the community team to support those groups already and those organizing teams already, we were able to um, arrange directly with these larger companies, okay, if you want to support the the kind of central entity that's that backs all of our official events then we can disperse those funds um on your behalf and that's been a really powerful um i think uh enabler for our for our community organizers i'm really really proud of the financial and uh, infrastructure that we have in place right now because it you 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 can be living on public assistance and still be organizing a $30,000 conference for WordPress. Um, no money ever needs to be handled by any community volunteers. Um, we have nest eggs of sponsorship that are given to every single WordCamp in the world. Um, no organizer ever risks losing their own money or um, getting... Um, you know, they have the, the legal and financial support of a centralized organization. And that really allows people to take some risks and extend themselves in a way that I find really inspiring. The growth that I've seen in our community volunteers over the year, over the years is really one of the things that gets me out of bed every morning. It's really exciting. Yeah, that's, that's really cool how you do that and how you really, uh, sounds like, try to take care of them and treat them the organizers and volunteers is as good as humanly possible. Um, you've talked about this, something called the four gets mm -hmm. and, and really distilling down what someone can get from being uh, a community organizer with WordPress. Could you tell us about that? Sure. Um, I <laughs> thank you for calling out one of the pieces of writing that I'm most proud of this year. <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> I uh, was, uh, I, I think a lot about our program and I was thinking specifically about like how much we ask of our people um, and how much they're just selflessly willing to give. It's stunning and humbling all the time. And, um, and then occasionally people come to our program willing to give so much, but not really clear on what they can expect in return. And every relationship is reciprocal, right? So, um, and, and so I wanted to kind of be a little bit more overt, more explicit with what people can expect to get out of this experience, um, organizing our events with us. So, the four gets, as I outline them um, for our organizers, include the primary one is impact. Like if you are motivated by impact, organizing WordPress community events is guaranteed to change lives in your community. It happens all the time. Um, every, um, almost every WordPress story that I've heard starts with uh, to set up a site and then I played around a little and da, 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 and then I went to a WordCamp and everything changes, right? So like the choices you make in that, in that leadership um, affect a lot of lives. So that's really powerful. Um, another thing that we provide our, is to our organizers is growth. Um, we don't require that you have much organizing experience to run a large and complicated uh, conference or to organize a meetup. So, you know, um, one of my colleagues says we, uh, we qualify the called, um, the people who are called to the work. Um, we then help put them in positions where they can um, take fairly low risk chances and really uh, stretch themselves and grow. Um, the third of the four gets is training and support. So we, you know, you can have never organized an event before and come to us and we'll help train you and give you all sorts of information, um, whether you like it or not, about best practices <laughs> and ways that we've observed things uh, working well and not working well. Um, and then finally, the fourth get um, is protection. Um, back before we had the centralized organization, um, a lot of our organizers uh, carried 
pretty substantial legal and financial risks when they were putting together events. Um, more risk than anyone contributing to WordPress core, you know? Uh, and so we wanted to remove that risk from our organizers um, and make it easier for them. I was given a fifth get by the community, by the way. Um, and, Let's hear um, it. Uh, one that I didn't want to presume, but was exciting to hear. Um, a lot of our community organizers shared that the other thing they get from our program is legitimacy, like being uh, able to say, yes, I'm a leader in this space. Yes, you can see that I get things done and can collaborate with people and drive a community forward gives them a certain amount of, of um, I wouldn't say, uh, notoriety necessarily but it makes them um makes it kind of makes it very obvious to lots of people that they can get things done with groups so and it's sort of an unobvious way to accomplish that goal right like you think oh i need to you know i need to do this or i need to do this or but actually like it's this really fascinating sort of way up the mountain and the non-obvious way up the mountain to Look, if I if I go out and really just help people and spend some time and energy helping the community and being a contributor and standing in front of everyone and sort of putting my hand up saying, you know what, I, I'll lead. You sort of are now looked at as a leader, right. you know, yeah. and and it just sort of elevates you. And it can we've seen this, too, with Startup Grind was that it it took somebody that was already a good person that had good values that had a lot to give. But it just elevated them to a place where now everyone's seeing them and they're like. I would have people say like, how did you find this person? They're amazing. It's like, they literally like applied, like they found us. They were already always amazing. You just, nobody like gave them a megaphone to, to be able to showcase their abilities and, and to be able to put WordPress on their resume and is part of the things they're doing for their business. I, I can only imagine what an impact that must bring to them to legitimize what they're doing. Yeah. And and I think there's a, there's something else there around like they already had the values. The other thing we try really hard to avoid is that kind of what I call the right person fallacy. Um, I don't think it's I think it's really dangerous to try to just find quote the right kind of person to do the work um, because that can really lead to a lack of diversity in your community and um, some uh, it can it can. You know, to to get businessy, it can really affect your funnel in a way that that doesn't help. So what we try to do is make those values very, very clear, and say like, hey, here are our values. If this, if these values match your values, if these goals are something that you can genuinely get excited about pursuing then this is the right organization for you, you know, and like have, have, it, have it be real clear to people like, you know, these, this is the goal here. If you want to join our, our, our quest, uh, do, we, do we have your sword, you know, <laughs> come along with us and then everybody wins. Thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please leave a review wherever you listen to this. If you'd like to see more about how to create your own event community, go to bevylabs.com slash pod. Again, that's B-E-V-Y-L-A-B-S dot com slash pod.